Well, welcome to our Tuesday live leadership chats. Today I'm talking with Janet Woodlock, who is chaplain and religious education teacher at Kilvington Grammar, but also one of our CCI coaches and trainers, who's really good at a happy dance, by the way. Uh, and today we are talking about coaching in education. My name is Kylie Butler. And I'm a part of Christian Coaching Institute, which is Australia's leading Christian coaching organisation. And we've been coaching and training leaders in coaching for over 10 years now. So, Janet, welcome. It is so great to have you with us today. <laughs> Love having you on. Um, before we jump into the, today's topic, Janet, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, the role and what you love doing? Oh, cool. Uh, so, well, Kylie's introduced me. Janet, coach, trainer, mum, wife, educator. Um, uh, I've got to confess, you know, I have some strengths as a coach and inspire. I also have some weaknesses. I had a phone call just before this meeting from the car mechanic telling me my car is unregistered. <gasps> How long have you been driving it unregistered? A couple of months. Oh, no. <laughs> I am sure I paid that bill. I was like, oh, my gosh. Anyway, so now my car is still at the mechanics. Now it has to get a road with you as well as a service. Oh, no. so, I can, so I can register my car. So, yeah, anyway, life is inter always interesting around me, yes. Kylie, because there's always some disaster happening as well as some exciting things. Uh yeah, what else do you, can you ask me? <laughs> I love it, Janet, and I do love that about you. There is always such vibrancy and life that sits around you. So thank you. Disaster. Uh, disaster. Who knows where today could go, hey? <laughs> you, could go, you could go anywhere today. I could get another phone. Actually, I'll put my phone away so I won't get work. the interruption of the next disaster. <laughs> All right. So we're talking today around coaching and education. Tell us about coaching in education what is it being used for what is it not being used for sure sure well I mean probably the first thing to say is personally um because I'm a chaplain as well as a uh teacher I use coaching questions a lot in just pastoral work mm. so um I want people to go away empowered so to be honest, I mostly just coach people who come to me with an issue. And um, I've got to say, I've, with kids and also teachers, I've been using my whiteboard lately a lot just uh, as a little technique because there's one in my room and start scribbling up on the board things I hear them saying and just uh, get them to have a look at it. So it's a, a really interesting little coaching technique to think yeah. about for coaches as to a lot of people do it with through notes. I just find you know, you put up the key things on the board and they have a look and go, oh, hmm. oh, and, and is this what you're telling yourself? Oh, hmm. what might be a more helpful thing to tell yourself? Hmm. Hmm. What options do you have here? No, do, do. Like you put it all up on the board where they can see it and they sit there and go, oh. And so, yeah, anyway, just as an aside, I've been finding that just because of the environment, that naturally lends itself to it. It's actually quite a powerful way to coach people in a pastoral context. So whack in a uh, whiteboard in your pastoral room, I reckon. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then wrap it off at the end or, or take a photo if they can take a photo if they want to. Yeah. Yeah. What else are you noticing in the broader, bigger context of education and yeah, coaching? Yeah. Good question. I got distracted just for a change. Uh, can you tell them an ENFP? <laughs> <laughs> I love ENFPs. They're so much fun. Yes. Well, anyway. No, it's a really great question. Coaching is uh, quite significant in education. It's used quite a lot in the US, particularly in the context of um, teacher professional development in some mm -hmm. places. There's been quite a push in some states to do that. Uh, one of the big things over there is called cognitive coaching. So it's mm -hmm. not as pure coaching as we would teach, but uh, because it's on the against the backdrop of, to use the posh word, teacher efficacy or teacher effectiveness, um, 
teachers will help identify areas in the education that they want to work on. So it might be classroom management, it might be assessment, it might be catering for individual difference. It, it, mm -hmm. The idea is people are motivated to work on the issues that they identify for themselves. And so just as executive coaching is being used in the business world, coaching of teachers in the context of improving their teaching practice mm -hmm. has quite a bit of um, momentum in parts of the states and it's picking up here. Um, particularly in that context, there's not a lot in Australia of what I'd call coaching students. Mm. I, I've found, I'm trying to dig into research at the moment around it and going, mm, it's not a lot. Mm. Um, not in this country so I, I think it's the fields are ripe for harvest actually in that space um, and I've been doing a bit of coaching with students this year so and, yeah. and so what do you how does coaching work in your school how does that work with students what happens there um, so well again I've, I've talked about it in a one-on-one -on -one pastoral context I will um, use mm. coaching techniques primarily actually in pastoral care um, because it just people go away feeling empowered. Mm. Um, but what I've been doing with our year 12s this year is um, it's not really teaching them to coach, but it is getting them to coach one another. So I'll have workshops with them where um, they identify academic and personal goals that they want for the year. And we've mm. particularly focused around coaching on academic goals because we are, in fact, a school. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the, the game, and in year twelve, they actually mostly at our school want to do well. So, yes. um, so the way I've done it, it's been quite a structured approach. So, here's a series of questions that the students get in pairs and ask one another. Oh, wow, yeah, and I give them rules. Don't talk about yourself. <laughs> Excellent. Don't give any advice. Yeah, excellent. Just ask the questions and listen well. Oh, and then wow. they turn, turn about. I mean, those are my rules whenever I'm doing coach training. As yeah. Yeah. Mind you, I was coaching someone this morning and I, you know, I did actually give some advice. <laughs> what, what, I asked permission. I asked permission. That's it. That's right. And it's that sense of how do you offer without attachment? Yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's there as an offering. It's not there as an expectation that you take it or that client takes it in that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, so no, I'm strict on the rules. Especially with the year 12s. <laughs> How does it work? Like, what do you what do you notice amongst the year twelves? Uh, well, you know, as you'd expect, variable engagement. Mm. <laughs> you know, you get even at a school like mine, which is an academic school, you'll get a few kids that, you know, they're not highly highly motivated academically. Most of our kids are, though. So they found it engaging and helpful. Um, mm. So, yeah, we'll keep, we're going to keep doing this and keep tweaking it. Mm. The other context that happens in our school, and it will be developed more for next year, is we have a, a teacher mentoring program of students. So mm. our school actually has um, most students in the secondary school Sorry, most teachers in the secondary school have a small group of students that they are mentored to. Mm. Um, so I have, I think, 11 students in my mentor group, but, you know, it's somewhere between 8 and 12, mm. half a class size, depending on the year level. Um, and it's been fairly unstructured time, you know, get to know the students, play a few games, whatever. And I'm feeling like we could take it to a whole new level by training our staff some very simple coaching techniques yeah. give them some coaching questions so it's structured as an aside there's a whole lot of artificial intelligence coaching almost going yeah. on like this yeah structured questions that do the heavy lifting for you so i'll use some of the insights from that and try and compile some you know coaching questions for students around both well-being academic goals you know etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm. and help staff to help students self-solve if you like mm -hmm. self-solve their issues develop 
strategies mm. for the things that they're wanting to achieve, whether it be in sport, whether it be academically, whether mm. it be personal and social. So that's kind of where we're heading with it next year. So you know, it's, I've only been at the school two years and they've both been COVID years. So it's it's been a bit of a hard place to get some momentum going mm. um, just because, you know, things online and a bit strange. But yeah. Uh, yeah, looking forward to developing a bit more in that space because, yeah. as uh, you know, my Google powers have shown me this is fairly undeveloped in Australia, the mm. practice of coaching students. Mm. So, like, if going forward and you think how can coaching be beneficial uh, or helpful within education, like where do you see it could grow going into the future? Um. Oh, look, the biggest thing is probably the one that um, there's already all the data on, which is teacher efficacy. Mm. Um, and it makes a, a big significant difference to have a coaching approach because uh, so much PD is just wasted. Mm. You know, in one ear, out the other, you sit through a seminar, nothing happens, nothing changes. Uh, so we know coaching parallel to um PD when needed mm. it's just so much more effective uh as a chaplain I'd like to see coaching to build pastoral relationships between staff um so you know probably set up coaching triads mm. in terms of pastoral support where you can share needs with one another um so that would be a dream um you know i Funnily enough, the chaplain actually isn't in charge of anything at the school, so you just have to <laughs> influence. Try influence. influence. Have, to, have to try and influence and drop ideas and see which ones catch on. But that, in my ideal world, I think, um, you know, setting up little coaching circles mm. for pastoral support. And, again, there's, there's really good evidence around the more you can do for staff well-being the more that enhances student well-being. Um, if you look at systems theory, it would say, um, you know, like anxiety spreads through systems. An anxious teacher, stressed out teacher, uh, that's contagious whether you know it or not. Yeah. Most of the time it's unconscious. Mm. So the more you can work on teacher well-being, the teacher comes in as a calm and non-anxious presence. That helps everyone else calm down. That helps well-being across the board. So yeah. if we look at it from a systems point of view, anything we can do to enhance staff well-being yeah. is going to be contagious. The more well-being skills we can give to staff to, the more they can talk about those things with students. So empower them. You know, in a context where, you know, there's been mental health challenges really over the last couple yeah. of years yeah, on yeah. top of all the usual ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, for me, there's so much potential to use coaching in the pastoral space um, at multiple levels. Mm. So good. I hear you talk around coaching for well-being, coaching for performance, coaching for development. It's like mm. just put coaching everywhere, right? Uh, look, you know, <laughs> <laughs> what's the question? The answer is usually coaching for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. So good to have you today, Janet. Thank you so much for sharing some of your wisdom and insight and what you're gleaning in coaching and education at the moment it's been so great to have you uh, look forward to seeing everybody else next tuesday at one o'clock have a great day bye everyone <laughs>